This lesson describes a sort of general purpose dialogue that you can use to pose a question of or send a message to your user. When you create the dialogue object, you must specify the text of the message and the selection buttons that are to be made available. This is the program that uses the dialogue to prompt from the user. It's about the same as the program we've been using to demonstrate the fundamentals of dialogues. Oh, by the way, the windows we've been dealing with up until now always appeared in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. You could actually have a window appear anywhere you want. All you have to do is say so in a call to set location. Just like all Java graphics, this location specifies the position in the window of the upper left-hand corner. The main window has three buttons. Each one of these buttons will cause a dialog to appear and the program waits for a response. The action performed method is the one that's called whenever any one of the three buttons is pressed. If this statement is true, the try button has been selected. This is the text of the message that is to be displayed in the dialog window. It's an array of string objects, so the text message can be as many lines as you would like or as you would need. It's most common to have just one line, but sometimes it's necessary for two, three, or even more. Another array of string objects specifies the buttons to be displayed on the dialog. This example has just one. The only thing the user is going to be able to do is OK the message. Just like we did earlier with the modal dialog, this dialog is constructed and a call is made to get response to display the window and retrieve the label text of the button the user selected. In this case, there's only one button, so we already know what the return string is going to be, so we just ignore it. The information here is needed to construct the dialog and is passed to the constructor as parameters. The reference to this window is passed because the dialog does need a parent. Next, a string will be used on the title line of the dialog window. The text of the message and the array of button labels are also passed to the constructor. The selection of the favorite button will cause this block of text to execute and build an ask dialog with several buttons. Whatever response is returned from the dialog is used as the title on this window. And this is for the exit button. This is an exit button with the famous are you sure message. If the answer is yes, the window is closed. Most of the code in the dialog itself will be familiar to you. It's almost all the same stuff you've seen before. It's just being used in a different way. The Ask Dialog class extends the Dialog class and implements the Action Listener interface. Now this is the only constructor of this class. As we saw before, it requires a parent frame, the title string, and two string arrays, one for the text and one for the button labels. The call to the constructor of the dialog class includes the parent window, the title to go at the top of the dialog window, and the flag setting that will make this a modal dialog. This sort of pop-up dialog with a simple push button answer is almost always a modal dialog. Doing this sort of thing in a non-modal dialog can cause the dialog to get lost behind the other windows and forgotten about. Anyway, this dialog won't just appear in the upper left-hand corner either. It's positioned in relation to the parent window. The call to get location on screen returns a point object that contains the X and Y position of the upper left-hand corner of the parent window. The values in the point object are adjusted so the upper left-hand corner of the dialog appears 40 pixels to the left and 60 pixels below the upper left-hand corner of the parent window. Now, you'll probably want to change this, but it seems about right to me, but not having any taste, how would I know? This new position is assigned to the dialog with a call to set location. This dialog is based on a border layout manager with a text panel inserted at the top 
and a button panel inserted at the bottom. This method accepts an array of string objects containing the text and constructs a panel that holds labels displaying them. A grid layout is constructed that has only one column but has one row for each line of text in the array. Now this loop executes once for each line of text. In the loop, a label containing the text is constructed and added to the panel. This method takes the array of button label strings and creates a panel containing the buttons. For each member of the array, a button is created, has this object inserted as its action listener, and is added to the panel. Now these last two methods are the same as they were in the dialogues we looked at earlier. A call is made to the getResponse method, which executes a call to the show method, and that pops up the dialog and then it blocks and waits. When a button is selected, that causes a call to action performed, which records the name of the button as a response and then calls hide. The hide method shuts the window and causes the show method to return, which allows the get response method to return with a response string. The window first appears in the middle of the screen instead of in the corner. The Try button pops up a dialog just underneath the button. And the OK button closes it. Notice that no matter where the main window is located, the dialog pops up near it. Notice that the selection that's made always becomes the window title. Of course, this window is a bit small for some of them.